Hi everybody, welcome to Cake Tastic Cakes. It's Jen, and I have a question for you. Do you ever have bananas that you let get really brown and nasty and gross and don't know what to do with them? Come make some banana bread with me. That'll take care of it. All right, to make our banana bread, I'm going to show you the super easy recipe that I've used, and it's quick, it's easy. All you need is a bowl and a blender, and you can make banana bread. So you start with two and a half cups of flour in your bowl, just two and a half cups of regular old all-purpose flour. You're going to add three teaspoons of baking powder to it, not baking soda, this is baking powder. And then you're going to add a half a teaspoon of salt, just regular old table salt. Now when I put them together in my bowl, I'm going to just give them a little mix with a whisk just to mix the dry ingredients up. And then put it aside. That's it. Okay, so like we're halfway done already. All right, in your blender, you're going to take a half a cup of milk and put it in your blender. And what I like to do is I like to add the wet ingredients first at the bottom of the blender so that way it mixes better because I used to do it like sugar and then banana and put the milk on top and it just, you'd have to like spoon it and stir it to get it to work. This way, it's all nice and wet at the bottom so it really works. So on top of your half a cup of milk, you're going to add three of your very overripe bananas. And um, you'd want them to be on the smaller size, not too big. If you were to have three large bananas, you might have to double the recipe, honestly, or maybe like half it, you know, one and a half times it. To this, you're now going to add five tablespoons of softened butter. I use unsalted butter because we already have the salt in there in the other dry mix. Add one egg to it. And then here comes the sugar that I was talking about before. It's one cup of sugar right on top, just regular old granulated sugar. Pour it right on top, just like that. Okay, and now that you've got all your stuff in your blender, pop it into the, into the base. If I had <laughs> my lid, then I would be using my proper lid, but just blend it. I just blend it until it's all nice and smooth and creamy. And the lid is my children's fault, by the way, not mine, because they put it somewhere safe. They washed it and put it away for me, and it's just gone. It's gone. So, yes, take your mixed up ingredients, pour them over top of your dry ingredients, get your whisk back out and stir it until it's all nice and blended together or mixed together. I guess you could put this in a mixer, you know, if you wanted to clean it when you were done, you know, like a standing mixer or use a hand mixer to mix it. But this way, you know, it's just a little bit less and it's not hard to do. It's pretty loose and, and runny. So it's simple. Now, for as far as your oven, you're going to have your oven preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and you're going to bake this for an hour. I have there a one whole loaf pan. So this is not a half a loaf, it's a whole loaf pan. It's my well-loved and well-used loaf pan. I'm giving it a little bit of a grease coating because, as you can see, it's so well-loved that the original nonstick is non-existent anymore. So I'm just putting a little bit of Crisco shortening, vegetable shortening, that type of thing on, on, the, edge, on the sides and bottom. Then I'm going to pour my batter into it, just like that. Scrape it into there. Make sure you get it all in. And it's going to fill it up pretty full, like three-quarters of the way, which is fine because it's just going to bake up. I've never had it pour over the sides. And bake it for an hour. So there it is when it's all done. You just test the center like you would any cake. Turn it over. You know, I take it out of the oven, let it sit for a few minutes, and then take it out of the pan itself and let it cool on my cooling rack. Now while it's cooling, I'm going to make the peanut butter icing. Uh, this is just a peanut butter buttercream icing. There are lots of recipes out there, but this one is really easy and very tasty. I, I've been putting it on everything because it makes more than a loaf's worth. That was two sticks of softened butter that I just mixed up a little bit. I added one cup of powdered sugar to it. You're going to use three cups total, but I'm doing one at a time so that I don't fling dried powder everywhere. Powdered sugar all over the place, all over my counter. There's my second cup that I'm going to put in there. Also, just giving it a little bit of a mix, trying to keep my my uh, mess under control there. And yeah, when you have it nice and creamy, and this stays pretty creamy the whole time, like it doesn't really thicken up much. You're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract to it. And again, just turn it back on, give it a mix, mix it all in nicely. There you go. No problem so far. And now I'm going to show you how much peanut butter. You're going to use a cup of peanut butter. 
So I am just using some Skippy, some creamy peanut butter. I recommend the creamy unless you really want the chunks. The creamy is just easier to mix, that's all. They won't cause your, your mixers to rattle and clank when you grind them up. So again, just one cup of peanut butter right into it. And then you're just going to mix it up some more. And at this point, it smells delicious. But we're not done yet. I'm going to still add that last cup of powdered sugar. I know you saw me put two scoops in there, but that was actually a half a cup of uh, powdered sugar that I had to do twice. And I'm also adding two tablespoons of milk. And again, just keeps it smooth, keeps it creamy, and it's delightful, I gotta tell you. It's really good. I have some extra peanut butter icing left, and I'm thinking of making cookies just to put on top <laughs> so I have something to put the icing on because I don't want to get rid of it. Uh, so yeah, mix it up. Give it a little scrape down with your spatula, just like you would any time. And you can see it really doesn't stick too much to the bowl itself. I guess the peanut butter's oil is really helping keep it, you know, together and not on my bowl. One final little mix, just to get in all the stuff that I scraped up. And then once your bread is cool, spread it on top of your banana bread. Put it on your slices individually. It's delicious. You will be glad you tried this. So that's it. That's easy, right? Easy banana bread with peanut butter icing. So I hope you found this little video helpful. Please like and subscribe because it really does help me out as well. I've got a lot of other videos out there, so please take a look. And as always, thank you for watching Cake to Cakes.